Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad you could join us today for this webinar about telling your professional story with Krista and Tompkins. I'm Drew Webb with the Alumni Association, and today's webinar is actually the third webinar we've produced this semester. You can view our previous webinars from this semester, as well as about 20 others, by visiting our alumni website, vuconnect.com slash career. While you're there, make sure to check out some of our other career resources on VU Connect, including the Career Advisor database, where you can search through over 8,000 alumni who have volunteered to help with career-related advice. Today's webinar will last about 45 minutes to an hour. Please feel free to type your questions into the question box as you have them, and we'll make sure that these get addressed. Um, and we're also recording today's presentation, and I will send you a link to the recording later this week. Our presenter today, Kristen, is a lecturer and director of the Capstone Internships in the Human and Organizational Development Department at Vanderbilt. Kristen's main research interests focus on experiential learning, mentorship to students, creative, cre creative development, excuse me, creative career development practices, design thinking, developing meaningful stories and assessments, and the implications these tools and concepts have on undergraduate students. She partners with organizations in Nashville, cities all across the U.S. and London, England to align internship talent. Kristen teaches and coordinates the HOD internship course delivery and content that reinforces understanding human behavior and organization, self-directed learning, and organizational effectiveness. In addition, she teaches talent management and organizational fit. Kristen earned her master's in human development counseling at Vanderbilt. She has achieved the designation of national certified counselor and global career development facilitator. She is also certified in the Myers-Briggs personality indicator, strengths finder, and frequently uses visual speech image tools. Kristen, thanks so much for being here with us today. Yes, thank you for having me, Drew. I'm, I'm really delighted that you would take a few minutes out of your demanding schedules and um, hopefully just sit back and, and enjoy um, an hour or so of talking about techniques that might be helpful for you as you come at this uh, conversation, probably from many different angles, whether it be you are thinking about making a job transition, maybe you work with people in a current role that some of the topics that we cover today might be helpful. A lot of different reasons that um, I hope you will walk away with some good, good techniques and skills from this experience together. So I just ask that you come with an open mind and you might need a pen and something to write with. And we are going to hopefully uh, navigate a couple of poll everywhere questions. So if you have access to an internet browser, that, that will be helpful in a few minutes. Um, so as Drew introduced me, that is a great uh, explanation of me on a piece of paper. But what I thought I might do is start by telling you parts of my story that you likely would not see on my LinkedIn bio or looking on my Vanderbilt bio, my Vita. Um, things like that as a way for you to get to know me a little bit better. And I think that that's what this experience today is ultimately about, is thinking about ways um, to context and share you in a way that um, others can connect with you in a more meaningful way. So let me just start by, um, again, reinforcing what Drew said is, yes, I do work at Vanderbilt currently, and in my role, I help students, this is how I like to explain it, I really help students to bridge the gap from the classroom to the workplace. So it's an opportunity to work with about 200 students every year who are in um, the HOD internship experience. And what happens with that is they come to events that you see uh, on the, on the slide now that looks similar to this. So oftentimes in my day-to-day, -day, I'm working with employers to come and speak to students, to work with students. And the visual that you see here is they are at the HOD Capstone Internship Fair, so making connections. And you can see probably many people in that room are sharing their professional stories. So um, they're trying to think about ways to stand out in the crowd. They're trying to think about ways to make their um, application and their resume hit the top of the stack when those employers leave that evening or that event because they all have to do this capstone internship experience before they graduate. So they get really nervous about coming to events like this. So a large part of my job, again, is 
talking about and doing some of the things that we're going to do today in the classroom with them to feel more confident, to feel more comfortable with talking to these employers and navigating their career life. Um, so how did this happen? I wasn't always at Vanderbilt. Uh, as you may can tell from my accent, I am from a, a small town in East Tennessee called Cumberland Gap. So the visual that you see on the overhead is um, my happy place, the Smoky Mountains, where I love to go and hike and uh, rejuvenate. Um, and so in this small town of Cumberland Gap with a population of 3,000, I had a lot of free time on my hands. Um, and so I, in thinking about how I got to where I am today, there are really two stories that stand out that I want to share with you. And one in particular is a mentor that I had in my life, Mr. Ron Thornton. And he was someone in my high school program who really encouraged me and gave me the confidence to apply for what was called the Jesse Stewart Writing Award. And at that point, I was able to receive this award and uh, looking back, that award was a great um, accomplishment, but more than anything, I think about the relationship and the mentorship that he provided and encouraged me um, through that process. And then the other thing that I think about with how did I get to this point and thinking about patterns and themes that led me to where I am today, um, you might be thinking, what in the world is this? Uh, well, this, yes, you are right. These are greeting cards. And I used to, while in high school, in my very first jobs that I loved, I actually sorted greeting cards at a, a small uh, pharmacy slash place called the Village Shops. And I loved that job because a couple of reasons. I got to look at those cards and think about patterns and relationships. And I would talk to people that were coming in to find cards for their special event or their special loved one. Um, and so, full forward, how does all this uh, impact what I do today with the students that I work with? Well, I still get to help them to find themes and patterns in their lives by using some of the techniques that we're going to talk about today. I still really value that mentorship and the relationships that I have with students. That's the favorite part of my job. Um, and on a side note, uh, some of the hobbies that I have and I really like uh, the life-changing art um, or the life-changing magic of tidying up. So if you know me uh, well, you will know that I love to organize. And so that's another theme in my life that I love to help students get organized with how they are going to bridge the gap from student to launching their careers. So again, that kind of brings us to where we are today. We're talking about some of the techniques that I use in the classroom or in coaching sessions with students to bridge that gap. So this will be um, our first attempt to test out what, uh, a little poll that I put together, Telling Your Professional Story in the Changing World of Work is our title. And I'm just curious, where um, are you calling in from today? So, I've activated the poll, and let's see if you can log on and respond at poll, P-O-L-L-E-V dot C-O-M backslash Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N, T-O-M-P-K-667. So if you are able to respond, then we will be able to see um, little kind of pins pop up um, as you're responding to the poll. So I'm not seeing responses yet. Oh, yay, here we go. So they're coming in. Great. So this is really um, interesting to see, uh, you know, all different parts of, you know, the world. Um, we're maybe sitting in our desks. Okay. We're maybe sitting, um, you know, behind a computer screen. But I think the one common thing that pulls us together is, we're constantly trying to find a way to connect with one another. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I love doing things like this, again, just to kind of provide the personal element. And I think that that's, again, what we're trying to do today is you can give anybody your resume, anybody can read your, your LinkedIn bio, but at the end of the day, it's all about forming a connection with others. And to see a visual of where we all might be sitting um, is just one way to do that. So. Um, I will have some other poll everywhere in a few minutes. So thank you so much for, for sharing kind of where you're calling in from today. And again, just to emphasize why I wanted to do that is because no matter where you're calling in from today, again, my goal is that you will gain at least one technique that you can use 
to connect with others in a more confident way um, in this changing world of work. So what uh, next here is what makes this process so hard? Like why would people want to sign up for a webinar on telling and your professional story or different techniques that might be helpful for that? So I've got another poll here. I'm going to activate. Um, so you can actually text in your response to this one or log on again. So what makes telling your professional story a challenge? A, I am not creative. B, I feel vulnerable. Yep. Um, C, I want it to be compelling. Or D, all the above. Okay. Good. So we're seeing some people chime in. And I think it's a little bit of all of these. Um, and this is exactly what happens with um, students. When I work with them in their coaching session, they come in and they say, I want to work in consulting. I want to travel around the world. And I want to um, provide a unique skill set. Well, an employer doesn't want to hire someone that um, doesn't have a good story behind what made you get to that point, to think deeply and creatively about sharing experiences that helped you get to that point. And this is not easy um, to sit down and think about that in a creative way. And sometimes it just takes a minute, like things today, where you're a little bit more thoughtful about it. So I'm going to hopefully provide you some different frameworks for feeling a little bit less vulnerable, um, for making your stories maybe sound a little more compelling, and to maybe give you a few more creative frameworks uh, to use as you're thinking about how to share your own stories. So let me go back over here. Thank you for responding to that poll. There will be more to come, so just wait. We're going to try to make this as interactive as possible. All right. <laughs> so uh, again, <clears throat> I think what is true no matter where you are today, so we kind of we got a good visual on where our callers are um, represented, but no matter if you are working in a HR, um, advertising, technology, finance, and these are all industries that our students in the HOD capstone will go and do their full-time internships in, the one thing that, that is true is change, change and transition. So being settled in one's professional role is not even a possibility. Um, change and growth are constant. So you are doing yourself a disservice by not constantly thinking about how can I um, grow and develop as a professional. Um, and so kudos to you for sitting in today to think about maybe your next step or um, you know some techniques that you can use as you are trying to be a, a lifelong learner and respond to some of these changes. Um, one of the statistics that we share in the classroom is that if you are entering the workforce today or newly entered, you could have as many as 16 to 17 different jobs and possibly five different industries over the course of your lifetime. So if you just take a minute and reflect on that, <laughs> um, that is a lot of change. Um, and so that can be really scary, uh, you know, for thinking about what those transitions might look like. But what's really helpful is to have a toolkit to know how to respond to those changes and to know how to maybe sell yourself in these changes or just, bottom line, make meaningful connections with others. Um, and so let's, let's look at what happens um, in, in, in these transitional moments. Obviously, I think we can all agree that, that change is inevitable um, and that we need these great stories to help us make these changes and transitions. So, I just want to preface this with I am not um, a scientist, but I can tell you that uh, and share with you this great visual about what happens when we hear stories. I mean, we all have these experiences of when you've connected with other people, and it's likely because they have um, shared something unique about themselves with you or shared something that um, maybe made them feel a little more vulnerable. But because what happens is, our brains remember these stories more than just facts, more than just I want to be in consulting because I want to travel and, um, you know, help a unique skill set. Talk to me a little bit about how you got to that point. So as you're telling st uh, stories um, behind some of your changes and shifts, this is what happens. Um, 
neural coupling, a story activates parts in the brain that allows the listener to turn the story into their own ideas and experience thanks to this process. So just in thinking back to whenever I opened up my own story, talking about mentors and teachers and, and really pivotal moments, first jobs in my own life, it's possible that that happened with you. You automatically were thinking about like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, so I'm just taking a gamble here and guessing that if, again, maybe that's what happened as I was sharing my own story. Um, mirroring listeners will not only experience the similar brain activity to each other, but also to the speaker. So um, this is really helpful when you're in the same room with someone. So I wish that I was in the same room with all of you right now, um, besides just Drew, but <laughs> this happens a lot. And then we actually release dopamine um, into the system when we have some type of emotional connection to someone. So, you know, for me to, to just share what's on my resume is great, but I wanted you to know a unique part of me that um, hopefully would allow you to, to connect with me in a more meaningful way when I opened up. And we're going to hear a couple more stories like that in a few minutes. Um, and so then you've got kind of this cortex activity that happens as well. So just some unique features that happen in the science behind why storytelling uh, is really helpful. Um, and so let me now shift to what are some elements of effective story? So you're like, okay, you've talked a lot. We know, yes, there's change. Yes, stories are good, important. But um, let's get into the nitty gritty here. So what are some things that you might walk away with today? And I would encourage you to maybe, if you have your pen and paper, write these things down. Um, so oftentimes, elements of effective stories will have a clear theme or point. Um, and when you think about when I shared my opening story, it was the bridge. So, uh, you know, I started out with the bridge and I brought you back to the bridge. So that ultimately is my clear theme theme in my career is to be able to help students that bridge that gap from student to the workplace. A conflict or problem, um, you know, I, I talked a bit about applying for the Jesse Stewart Award and, you know, that was hard and it, it gave me a push and a confidence because of Mr. Ron Thornton. Um, and then the change, I would say, again, with me is um, just the transition to the roles that I've had. I'm no longer working in. Um, card sorting. I'm no longer, uh, you know, applying for the Jesse Stewart Writing Award, but here I am and I bring forward all the different uh, skills and talents that I've learned um, from those previous jobs. And then emotion, this is not emotional, so I didn't make you cry when, I don't think so, in the opening segment, but I, I, I gave you a little bit of my vulnerability, like that was scary, or I'm from a really small town and I had a whole lot of time on my hands, so I'm giving you a unique component of myself. So what I'd like to do, if this works right, is to allow you to hear um, a story from NPR, and some of you may have actually heard this before, but this is something that we'll do a lot in the classroom with students, is encourage them to listen to other professionals stories, um, and then they also have to go out and have a lot of field conversations or informational interviews um, to hear stories. So just as a way to give you an example, what I'd like to show you is Megan's story on NPR. It's about three minutes, and then I'm going to ask you to chime in on where you maybe saw some of the things that we just listed. So what's the clear theme point, conflict, problem, change, or emotion? Um, so let's just see over here if this will work for us. And now for Valentine's Day, we have an economic idea wrapped in a love story. Here's Jacob Goldstein from our Planet Money team. When Megan McArdle was in her early 30s, she met a fantastic guy. Every time we went on a date, it was great. It was just easy. I totally thought this one could be the one. He was handsome and fun. On weekends, they made pancakes. Everything was great. It was just this. One very small thing. <laughs> that thing was marriage. They never talked about it. But Megan assumed things were headed in that direction. They moved in together, a few years passed, and one day Megan told her boyfriend that her family had actually started scoping out a potential wedding venue for them. And I mentioned this. He said, you know, I think it's sort of sweet. And I said, well, are you, do you think we're getting you ready to get married? And he said, yes, I think I'm ready to get married. Megan was elated. I woke up. Not even thinking, oh, 
wedding do you like or whatever, just thinking, wow, you know, I've, I've, I've got this guy and um, we're going to make a life together, a whole life. That feeling didn't last. Four days later, Megan's boyfriend said he'd made a terrible mistake and Megan moved out. So I moved back into this uh, tiny little apartment and uh, which would sort of appropriately, it was like a cave. And I sat in my for about six months and cried. She spent a lot of time playing video games and back to what she'd missed in the early. One moment in particular stood out. She and her boy were and they were talking to someone they'd just met. And somehow the topic of saying I love you came up. So the three of us are talking, and he says to the stranger, well, I, I won't say I love you until, um, until I'm totally sure it's the one. You know, like, I've, I've uh, never said I love you to her, and I have no intention of doing so anytime soon. The boyfriend is right in front of Megan to injure. And Megan says after the breakup, she couldn't figure out why she had let this moment slide. I should have had it out that night. And I didn't. And the end result was I wasted three years on a relationship that I should have known pretty early on wasn't going anywhere. Megan's date was writing about economics. And at some point when she was sitting there crying in her cave, she realized that date in this relationship because of something she wrote about all the time for work. An economic idea called the sunk cost fallacy. It's the idea that there are a lot of things in life a sunken ship. You have invested a lot of money in it and now it's gone and you can't get it back. The rational thing to do in that setting is to walk away. But of course, that's not human nature. Human nature is to think that ship was really expensive. I should try to get it back. This is the fallacy. We throw good money after bad. That's trying to get back something we've lost. And that's exactly what I was doing over and over and over again. I just couldn't let go and say, you know what? I, I invested all this time, and he's great, but the ship is not going anywhere, and I have to let it go and go look for one that is. This story does have a happy ending. Megan got married to another great guy. She still writes about economics, now at Bloomberg. And she's had conquering the sunk cost fallacy. She recently got rid of a vacuum cleaner that she'd spent a lot of money on, but just wouldn't get the dog hair off her cat. Mm -hmm. She went out and bought another one. It works great. Jacob Goldstein, NPR News. Okay. Okay, great. Hopefully you were able to hear um, at least some of that. Because at this point, what I'd like you to do is think about what did you notice about Megan's story? Oops. Um, let me go back to here. What did you notice about Megan's story as it relates back to the, um, you know, components that I mentioned that you should look for when you're putting together an effective story? So did you see the clear theme or point? What was the conflict or problem or change? Or was there kind of an emotional connection that you made with Megan? So I just want to hear your responses. And let's see, again, if this works. If you'll give one word to describe something that connects back to those elements, um, that we described. So what was the clear theme? One word would you say was the clear theme? What was a conflict or problem, a change or an emotion that you heard um, through listening to her experience? <clears throat> Enlightenment, disbelief, good. Awareness, yeah. Realization, yeah. So these are all great. Um, and some things that I would say, you might be thinking, why in the world did we listen to an NPR story about sunk cost fallacy? Um, and what I would encourage you to think about takeaways with this is um, sometimes it just takes listening and hearing other people's stories and practicing some of these key ideas on others like you just did. And now as you're moving forward, could you come up with some examples in your own life of how you've had to make transitions? So, you know, she was talking about a relationship, but maybe some of you feel the way that she was explaining it, um, her relationship. Maybe that's how you feel about your career right now. You know, maybe you're like, oh, I've put so many years and in investment and training into this career, but I just really what am I doing? And you're ready to let it go. So, um, you know, there are a lot of, I think, connections that you can make back to our topic today. But I think the clear thing here is that you're able to hear an example of an effective story. And NPR does a great job with this. 
Um, they have a really good podcast called um, How I Built This. Um, and I would encourage you to check that out as well um, to hear very successful um, people uh, sharing their stories about how they got to where they are. But thank you um, for sharing those clear themes, conflict, and hopefully you, you kind of see the point behind um, some of these elements that you could incorporate in your own professional story. And I, the reason I take you back to where I started is um, to encourage you to maybe create like a visual board um, such as this, and you could just kind of go back and write story after story about moments in your life like Megan's with a relationship or like mine with a mentor or like mine with my first job that would help you get to the point where you feel more confident because I feel like some of this is the practice. And now you have the framework um, and some elements to think about as you're writing your own story. So that's why I wanted to show this part here. So that is one technique that I would encourage you to think about, writing your own stories and going back and using these as benchmarks for, okay, have I done this and have I done these, have I done these things effectively? Um, and then the other resource that I recommend is NPR and how I built this is a great resource. So something else that uh, um, other techniques, you just can't go wrong with using uh, a cat picture with a tie uh, to make a good laugh and kind of get you outside your head a little bit. But when we got started this afternoon, as I said, I just wanted you to come at this with an open mind and kind of think about um, you know, some unique techniques that you could take away with and get a little creative with it. And one of the other things that we do a lot with our students and you may have heard of this concept, but to help them to think about their own story is what we call a six-word memoir. Um, and so this can link back to your life, your career, where you are with a transition, a relationship. It can really mean anything. Um, we'll sometimes have students come in at the end of their HOD capstone experiences and capture a six-word memoir about what their semester has been like or um, if they go on an interview and they're just like, oh, that was terrible, you know, I've learned so much from that. Let's capture that in a six-word memoir. Um, and as a way for them to get more creative with their words and sometimes think about if they're thinking about their career in a transition, where do they want to end up? And a great place to start with this is um, to start with a list. And if you have a pen and paper and you can do this for just a few minutes, um, list as many words, topics, memories, personality traits you can think about yourself. Activities you do, items, belongings, places you like, uh, feelings you have. Don't edit or cross out anything. Um, so if you just want to free write for like a minute or so, this might be fun to test out. Um, Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but it'll give you like a little taste of what it's like to write a six-word memoir. And it really can be about anything, any moment that you're having right now with your own career, um, with a transition, with a relationship. But um, you're going for quantity here, so write as much as you can in about three minutes. And this will give you some words to pull back from in just a second, because I'm going to have you test out writing like a six-word memoir. And again, if you want to keep on our theme of professional and career, maybe it could be a six-word memoir about your career. So I'm going to give you like a couple of minutes to just free write and look at this uh, list of ideas. Give you some music <laughs> or blast you out. Some music. <laughs> so I'll give you a second just to free write some ideas. Don't worry about spelling or what people might think. No one has to see all this list. <laughs> 
things about you that interest you, hobbies, things you do in your career, roles you've had, people. Give you a few more seconds to get a few things down on paper. Okay, so <clears throat> if I were to do this with the class, I would probably give it a lot more time and we would do some um, activities and things to get students thinking about um, what they wanted to say or topics or, or areas that they're going to focus in on. But um, just for time's sake, these are just some examples of six word, word memoirs. Um, hula hooping life, looking for balance. I love that one. Um, nobody loves you like your mother. Uh, searching, finding, whining, losing, happy, sad. So I'm just curious if you were able to put something together. It's a fun, creative way. You could even, um, you know, again, do this with a group that you work with. It's a great brainstorming activity. It's a great, um, opening kind of exercise and, and workshops that you do, but let's just see if any brave soul would be willing to put um, on our poll six word memoirs that they came up with. So you can respond at the website, uh, pollev.com backslash Kristen, T-O-M-P-K 667, or you can actually text this in. So we'll see if we get any brave responses. Remember, these are anonymous, so you can put things on here without us making any connections. <laughs> All right, I love it. Run, dance, jump into helping others. That's great. <clears throat> So I'm going to guess maybe someone kind of thinking about the role that they currently have or that they want to have, um, helping teams succeed, individuals find fulfillment. This is great. Using data, make good decisions. Excellent. And these are really fun to do with your colleagues, too. If you have whiteboards in your office, um, have people put post-it notes up. Mind stretching environments engage my thinking. Love it. Traveling database therapist, organizing data. All right. So, just again, another way to get you uh, creatively thinking about maybe the current role that you have or a role that you hope to have in the future. So, thank you for, um, for sharing those examples. So, six word memoirs, those are really fun to do to get you outside your head a little bit. Uh, the next is, these are, uh, this is a way, a framework that I will work uh, with my students as they're practicing for interviews. Um, they might come in and say, oh my goodness, you know, I've had all these investment banking internships, but I had this life-changing experience um, this summer when I was traveling in Barcelona and now I think I want to go into hospitality. How in the world am I going to explain to an employer um, how what my resume says doesn't really speak to what I currently want, want to do? Um, so it's just a really good framework and that maybe a, a good response to that common question that you get, like, tell me about yourself. You know, we all get it um, at parties, interviews, things. So I won't make you do that um, on this, this call today, but just another way for you to think about giving um, a good skeleton to if you are going to be at a networking event or if you know uh, the holidays are coming up and you're going to be talking to people, maybe you're in a job, job transition. Um, so this is just kind of a comfortable way to frame um, where you are with your career and your profession. Another tool that I use a lot with students, uh, it's called Visual Speak. Um, and as you can tell, I really like fun pictures. Um, 
and this is a, a, a tool you can actually order, but you could do this with pictures on your phone. Um, if you're working with a team of people, you could ask them to pull up a picture on their phone. But you could throw out a topic like, what, do you, what gifts and talents do you want to bring um, to your current role that maybe you don't already have the opportunity to do? Where do you find that your time flies by and you're completely in your element? Um, so this is especially helpful for people that have maybe no idea with what they want to do next. It's a way to link um, their interest areas uh, in terms of finding opportunities that, you know, at a paid job, that are going to allow them to do that and express those things. There are a variety of different ways that you can use these, uh, these pictures. So they come in this nice little set, and I'll lay them out all over the room, and I'll have students just randomly pick photos because, again, it's really hard to get outside of your head. Um, you know, oftentimes we're so literal with, this is exactly what I want to do and the path that I want to take, and I'm applying to these five jobs, and I'm linking on LinkedIn, and I'm XYZ, but okay, let's just step back a minute and remember um, why you are doing this. So I think that these are really great and fun tools to do that with. And then I wanted to um, share with you a couple of books that I recommend because um, we can't do it all in a 45 to hour long webinar. Um, so what do I use a lot with students? We um, have recently adopted uh, this human-centered design approach um, with our students in our curriculum. And this is a great book that takes that process of empathizing, um, getting to know what industries that you want to work with, coming up with your defined statement or your design statement around where you want to go next, doing some brainstorming, um, which they refer to in this book, kind of the ideate phase, um, coming up with your prototype, and they have these great ideas of creating your odyssey plans, so kind of these three big picture ideas of where you want to go next with your career. So we pull from a lot of these exercises um, into the classroom. Another book that I, we use a lot in the classroom is called Little Bets, and this kind of goes back to earlier whenever I recommended listening to other people's stories, like on tools like NPR, that's how I built this podcast. This is a great book that goes into great detail about um, professionals that have taken risk and companies that take risk, and they try some things out, and it doesn't work, so they go back to the drawing board. Um, this is a real struggle with the population that I work with, college students. They are afraid to fail, um, and this gives them some really good visuals on people that have and how they've overcome it, and it actually happened to be, you know, one of the most the highlights of their career. So Peter Sims, Little Bets, it's a great book. It's a real quick read, too. Um, Essentialism is a great resource. It gives you some great questions to ask about how you're spending your time and um, what really matters the most, and there's some uh, helpful visuals and some infographics that he uses that I really liked and good takeaways that I will we'll, uh, lay out with my students. So that's a good one if you're looking for something. Strengths Finder, Drew mentioned this earlier. Um, sometimes we just need language for how to talk about ourselves, and uh, the group that I work with, they struggle with that. I'm not really good at anything. I don't know. I've never had any work experience, but Actually, the strengths finder helps you to find ways to articulate, maybe even just in your free time or your extracurricular, um, how, how can you put those into words and sell those and think about sharing stories with employers. So that's a great framework to use. And then I'll give a shameless plug for my colleague, Kate Brooks. Um, you majored in what? This is the new edition of her book. It has great resources, um, mind mapping, possible lies, exercises. Uh, we use a lot of these uh, resources with our students in our office in the Human and Organizational Development Program. So really like all five of these books. Keep and Kate is our current Career Center Director. Yes, thank you. Um, so, and if you haven't gotten a chance to, to pick that up and check it out, it's a great resource. Um, so, uh, and just reflecting on everything that we talked about today, I'll just kind of recap. Hopefully, you have taken away maybe um, a framework for how to put together your story. So, elements of effective stories. We talked about having a clear theme, conflict, change, having some type of emotional connection. 
Um, we talked a little bit about the present past future framework, talked a little bit about the six word memoir, and then the visual speaks tools that I really enjoy using, and then finally some of those uh, resources that I mentioned at the end. So I'm just curious uh, if we've accomplished our goal in this short time that we have today. I want to see if there is one tool in particular or a technique that we have discussed um, that you might test moving forward, whether it be with your own practice, uh, your own life, or working with clients or coworkers, whatever it might be. I'm just curious, what is one storytelling technique that you might test? And if I get just one response, <laughs> the visual board, yes, great. I think that, that those are really helpful. Six word stories, excellent. <clears throat> Yes, those are really fun. And there are a lot of great resources out there um, to help you frame those and to do exercises on your own or with groups. So that's fun. Great. Good. Okay. Yeah, that's always good. Present, past, and future. Um, again, I hope you walk away with just some really good techniques moving forward. Um, so it takes a little work on your part, but because now if you sit down and just think about it, um, I think you will feel more confident moving forward that you can speak to some of your guests and some of the personal experiences that you've had in your own life that have gotten you to where you are today. Um, so just in closing, I will um, again say as the director of the um, Human and Organizational Development Capstone Internship Program. The, we do host uh, students in six different cities, um, Nashville, New York, D.C., San Francisco, um, London, England, and Chicago, I believe this is the one I did not mention. So if you're interested in learning more about what that program looks like, there's going to be a link. It'll take you to our website. Um, but I would love to have the opportunity to talk with you in person, um, share uh, more stories over the phone or just to get to know you better. So feel free to email me or follow up if you have questions after this. Great. And we do have time for some questions right now. Um, if anyone has a question, you can go ahead and type it into your um, question box and we'll facilitate a little bit of Q&A here. Does anybody have any personal anecdotes about sharing stories or give people just a few more minutes here? All right, well, it was a very comprehensive yeah. uh, presentation. Sure. Kristen, thank you again for joining us today, and You're thank welcome. you, everyone, uh, who logged on today. As I mentioned, we'll be emailing you a recording of today's presentation, and I'll also include a brief evaluation. We would love to hear your feedback about today's presentation. Also, uh, just to note um, that our next webinar will take place on October 25th, and we'll focus on working remotely. And we did have uh, one question that came in. Uh, what was the last title of your book written by your colleague? Mm -hmm. um, you majored in what by Kate Brooks, Catherine Brooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a, a great book they're now using um, with students as well in the Career Center as kind of the kind of foundation for career coaching there. All right, well, thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.